When I was young, my dream was to become a pilot. Like an eagle, fly about the clouds, and with a bird view to see this beautiful world. But instead, I became a land surveyor, John Mattis, or my wife sometimes referred to me as a jungle boy. I'm here to share with you the evolution of geomatics from my 37 years of experience. We are the expert in collecting information, anything that is above the Earth's surface. It can be a mimic feature or the natural features. By collecting this information, we convert, in, convert it into something that is useful, just as map. Let me give you some illustration of what we are doing. Example, in land surveying, if the client has a piece of land in the middle of nowhere or deep in the jungle, they will engage us, then we will locate the piece of land to show them where it is. At the same time, we'll pick out all the information within the land itself and produce a topographical map. And they will use this information, a piece of information for development. Once it is done for development, they build houses or different things on top of it. They might want to start lock into a smaller pieces of land. Then we do the subdivision to demarcate the land for them, put in this boundary and to demarcate exactly where it is. But for our profession, we are not just limited to land. We also do the sea profile underneath the lake, the river, or the sea. We produce this hydrographic map or hydrographic survey. But on top of it, we also do engineering survey for the geometry mapping. So now with added service, besides picking up all this information and show it on the, show it on the drawing, we also provide this also photo seated on top of it, of this drawing, to make it more beautiful, more presentable. So for our line of work, it is very important that we always ask the question about precision and accuracy, because based on that, we, we will use it to determine what sort of tools, what sort of uh, technique we can use to carry out the survey. Let me take this opportunity to share with you about the equipment that we have been using. From the humble beginning, we have this simple measuring tape a chain, rather a metal measuring tape that we measure, and also compass. And together, when things move along, there's something more sophisticated, just as to the light. It can measure the horizontal and vertical direction. And with the help of electronic distance measurement, then when all these things put together, we call it total station. You probably still see them around because it's one of the most common equipment that we still use nowadays. Of course, back in 80, when US put out the first GPS satellite into the sky for the military use, we geometrists also take this advantage. To, we also benefit from it too. We use it to locate position. If you see this GPS equipment, on my right hand side. I was one of the very first Bruneian to use this GPS equipment that was back in late 1980s. It was big, huge, and so difficult to operate. And it takes several hours to observe just to, uh, to determine a single point. But if you were to look at my left again, after fast forward with the new equipment now, 
it is so good and so small and so fast. You can determine a point in less than one second with the centimeter accuracy. There's another milestone which is very significant to this geometric industry for the technology advancement. It is the remote sensing. So the one that you're familiar with, probably if I were to put it out, is LiDAR. LiDAR is a 3D laser scanning device. With one scan, you can pick out multiple points just one point, one scan, you can pick up a lot of information. As compared to EDM, you can only pick up one point at a time. So can you imagine, when you have all these good sensors put in together, what would it be? Would you like to have one of these devices? John Mattis World, we have produced so many over the years, so many different types of this equipment. It has all these sensor built into this small device with the scanner, camera, barometer, a compass, everything into one. So if you have one of these, actually it's very handy. You can scan the room, you can bring it to jungle or hiking, it's, you can add it as a survival kit. But of course for us as a geometrist, our equipment is a bit bigger, but of course it's more expensive and it's more accurate and better, of course, in many ways. Just imagine you have all this equipment that put together now. Now, think about it. What if I were to ask if have, you have a robot with the artificial intelligence built into it? Isn't it beautiful? Look at it. It is a drone. Drone can do all this thing now. It has the two GNSS receiver, and you have LiDAR, multiple camera on the payload, this stuff. Look at this 3D image with 10 hectares of land, which was captured by this drone in less than half an hour. It is a 3D image. It consists of multi-millions of points that are put together. You can see that the image, you can move around. You can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can go to any angle, you can go to any direction to view them. Isn't that beautiful? It is not just a picture, it's a 3D image. You can do so many things with it. Because it is a 3D image, we can build or we can generate contour on top of it. Not only contour, we can digitize the information. With all these man-made features, you can see them and you can digitize them and produce a nice drawing. Not only that, some other profession like forestry, might be able to use it because it can also help you to determine the height of the tree and the diameter of the trunk. There's a lot more application that you can use. And also you can do a cross-section on the area where you wanted to study. In this picture here, it is not just a Pretty picture. It, can, it has a lot of information into it. We geometrists, I believe we can make a significant contribution to sustainability by extracting this data from various sources and combine them and convert them into something that is useful quantitative information. And then all these different professional disciplines can be used then. It can be an architect, planner, it can be an uh, engineer, a geologist, or forestry. But maybe it can be used by tourism as well. What is next? We always ask, what is next? 
what will come? Humans are hungry for information. They want more and more, more sophisticated. Not only they want more, they want it more precise, they want it fast. So I believe due to this shift of demand, the geometrics industry will continue to evolve to have a more sophisticated equipment. The question is, are we ready? I believe we have to get ready to tap into this new technology in order to survive and to have a better world. Just to conclude, I might not be able to be a pilot, but today, I'm glad that I can fly my drone to see this beautiful country. Thank you.